Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and it's time to get serious. We're going to do some real citizen science using the solar eclipse of April 8th. So let me show you how we're going to find the distance from the Earth to the Moon and from the Earth to the Sun. Let's get to it. Now the solar eclipse is going to occur at San Antonio at approximately solar noon. So at that time, the Sun will be located here, the Moon will be located here, and the solar eclipse will be over San Antonio. 45 minutes later, the solar eclipse will move to Indianapolis, Indiana. Now we have a couple of givens in this that we have already gone over, but I'm going to restate them now. The solar rate versus the lunar rate. There's a difference of 0.315 degrees per hour. The moon transverses our sky slower than the sun does. In other words, as the solar eclipse moves from San Antonio to Indianapolis, the sun will move from here to here relative to the moon. Now the time that it's going to take is 45 minutes. The distance between San Antonio and Indianapolis is 1,608 kilometers by Google Earth. Now we're going to form a triangle from the moon to San Antonio to Indianapolis, Indiana. And this top angle, angle alpha, is going to be 0.75 for 45 minutes, that's three quarters of an hour, times 0.315. So that's going to give us an angle at the apex of 0 0.236 degrees. The angle here at Indianapolis is going to be 90 degrees minus 0 0.236 degrees. So it's going to be 89.764 degrees. Now given that information, I'm going to do three different determinations of the distance from the Earth to the Moon. The first is going to be a back of the envelope calculation. Then we're going to take into account something we forgot to do. And then we're going to do it right. So. Have some fun with me. When looking at angle beta here, the tangent will be the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the tangent of angle beta will be the distance to the moon over 1608. If we take 1608 and multiply it by the tangent of angle beta, we get the distance to the moon. What's that come out to? And quite frankly, that's pretty doggone close. But I'm Bob the Science Guy and we're going to do better. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have forgotten something. The surface of the Earth is curved. Indianapolis is not here. It's down here. So what we need to do, we need to figure out this distance. We know this distance is 1608, but we need to know what that distance is. Well, how can we get it? Well, the best way is to find the chord length between these two points and now we've got another right triangle. But knowing the chord length requires that we know the radius of the Earth. All we know right now is that that is 1608. Now I did do the math with the chord length and I'll do it again here shortly. But I will tell you the difference between the chord distance and the surface distance is actually only about 13 kilometers. But we'll do that in a minute. Next question that we have is how long is that segment right there? Well, Flat Earthers, I told you that 8 inches per mile that I talked about a couple of weeks ago was going to come back and bite you. Right now is that time. So you're all familiar with 8 inches per mile squared, and as we demonstrated a while ago, there are also conversion factors for nautical miles and kilometers. In this case, we square 1608 kilometers and multiply it by 7.8 centimeters per kilometer squared. And as a result, this distance is 202 kilometers. Now we have another triangle to solve. We'll view 1608 as the hypotenuse of the triangle. And we're going to view 202 kilometers as the opposite side for that angle right there. So dividing 202 by 1608 gives us the sine of that angle. If we take the arc sine of that angle, it is 7.16 degrees. Now what's this leg of the triangle? This is the adjacent side. If we take the cosine of 7.16 degrees and multiply it by the hypotenuse, we will get this distance. And that is now 15.954 kilometers. So we have 
1595.4 times the tangent of beta, which again is right there, equals what? 387327. We're getting a little bit closer. How about Calc 4? Do it the real way using the chord length. Well, when we use the chord length, we find that this angle is now 7.21 degrees, and that distance is 1582.4 kilometers. So we go 1582.4 kilometers tangent beta equals the distance to the moon. The actual distance to the moon to three significant digits is 384,000 kilometers. Nailed it! Now that we know the distance to the moon, which has of course been verified by both laser and radar, we have a couple of things that we know. First of all, we know that we had to use a spherical Earth to calculate it. That means the Earth is spherical because it came up with the correct answer. Now while doing triangulation on a flat Earth got us close from two sites, when that third site is added, it's off again because the moon will be another distance away. And second of all, now that we know the distance to the moon, we can find the distance to the sun. In fact, I think we're going to do better than that. We're not only going to find the distance to the sun, we're going to find the diameter and the radius of the Earth as well, just from this calculation alone. So I think we'll do that in another video, maybe later on today, because this is going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you follow me to show you how you can do this, and then we're all going to do it live during the solar eclipse. Take care, guys.